Hi. Hello. Hi. Let's get started. I'm Lucas Anzalriaga, a um, QA engineer at Midocura in Barcelona. I'm here today to present me on scalability testing with Newton and open source tools with my friend and former colleague, Danny. Yeah, uh, my name is Daniel. Uh, I'm currently working as a software engineer for Red Hat for the QA department. And basically, I'm going to introduce you guys in case you don't know after all these Q sessions that we have been having through during all the summit about what is Tempest and so forth. But let's go through it in a Okay. okay, so the agenda for, uh, for today. We briefly introduce Mironet, what's Mironet, and the problem statement of uh, scalability testing in SDN. Then we will show the Mironet acceptance cycle at Midokura. And then... Yeah, then now we'll be speaking about Tempest, a little bit how does it work for the OpenStack CI, how does it interact with Zool and every component, and then we're going to be uh, speaking about uh, how to scale it, and then we'll be roughly speaking about a real use case where we found it back using those tools. So, what is Mironet? Mironet is a network virtualization product, and it's open source. So, what is uh, network virtualization? Network vir virtualization is about decoupling the infrastructure from the physical layer, so that the uh, network functions that were previously done on with physical appliances now are done on software. You can think of layer two switching, uh, layer three routing, load balancing, firewall. So why do we need um, network virtualization at all? Uh, network virtualization is here to fill the gaps between host virtualization and uh, the networking. So you can think as of network virtualization as a network as a service. So what are the benefits of a network virtualization? A network virtualization it's, it allows you to have a flexible, um, allows you to uh, scale. Uh, you don't have the limitation, sorry, of the underlying physical network. You can think that now you can create uh, routers, switches, everything in software without any um, uh, limitation. In the case of uh, Mionet, it's also distributed, so you don't have single point of failures. So, in and also it's um, cloud friendly, as it's uh, completely programmable and it uh, offers a pluggable API to plug the uh, either VMs or Docker's into the network. Uh, into the virtual network. So in this slide, we can see the underlay physical network formed by a number of uh, BGP gateways and uh, the compute nodes running the uh, com uh, v uh, VMs or Docker's containers. So what happens is that um, when a packet egress a compute node or a gateway node, Mironet will put this packet into the uh, overlay network, and we will perform what we call a simulation. That means that this packet will traverse the virtual topology that is created so that Mionet decides whether it has to be sent. If it's a south-north packet, it will be sent to a BGP, then to the exterior. If it's a east-west traffic, it will be routed to a will be sent to another compute. Okay, so here we have the reference architecture for uh, Mionet and OpenStack. So we have a number of gateway nodes that will uh, connect our OpenStack deployment to the exterior, uh, a number of compute nodes that are the same computes as in an OpenStack deployment with the difference that instead of having the Neutron uh, OVS agent, we have um, the Mironet agent that will tell the OVS kernel module how to treat the packages of the, uh, of the networking. Then the controller, again, is also the same node as in an OpenStack um, deployment, 
and we will have the neutron server running there and the Mironet cluster, which is the endpoint a API for uh, Mironet. And the way um, Mironet is integrated with Neutron is throughout our uh, network plugin, Mironet network plugin, that is responsible to translate the uh, Neutron calls into Mironet API calls. So what's the problem statement of uh, SDN scale testing? So there are a number of intrinsic challenges uh, of SEN scale testing. The first one is it's distributed. So it means we need many points of probes in many different places, which makes it very difficult. Also, although it is decoupled from the underlying infrastructure, any failure on the underlying network will affect the overlay too. And of course, now uh, we have a fast changing environments with unpredictable, unpredictable traffic patterns as network functions are not mapped into physical devices as previously, now they're in, in software. So there's all kinds of new patterns that cannot allow you to find these specific uh, points of failure or troubleshooting the, the failures. On the other hand, we have a number of implementation challenges. We cannot have a dedicated testbed for scale testing on SDN because of the cost of the hardware, the cost of the deployment, and the maintenance. So we need some kind of tool that allow, allows us to emulate these, um, emulate scaling the underlay. So simplifying, the uh, dimensions of scale testing, you can find, drag them to these three uh, dimensions. Traditionally, um, network testing has only been done in one of the dimensions at a time. And that leads to many problems when going into production as the relationships between these three axes are not always as expected. So, these three uh, dimensions of uh, CN scale testing can be um, um, classified into scale the overlay. So we can increase the um, API stress. We can increase the size of the network uh, virtual topology, such the what are the maximum limits of routers, load balancers, networks that uh, virtual topology can support. In addition to this dimension, we can start adding workloads. So how these virtual topologies behave when you in increase the, the, the workloads on the data plane and you start adding new flows and so on. And on the last dimension, we, are try we will scale, how are we able to scale the underlay? So the physical network. We just say that it's not, um, and it's unfeasible to scale a physical underlay. So we need the tool to allow us to uh, scale an emulated underlay. So in the Y and Z axis, we will use Rally that allows us to scale the control plane operations at the same time add workloads. And for scaling the underlay, we will use um, our tool, which is called Mironet Sandbox, which is a wrapper around Docker. So this is the uh, Mironet acceptance cycle we follow for an open source release. Once the uh, release candidate is generated, we have three parallel deployments, which are the scalability lab, which is the one I am presenting today. We use this sandbox based on Docker and then rally for benchmarking. We have a certification cloud, which is a bare metal cloud to perform uh, performance benchmarking on real hardware. And then we have a last automa automated deployment that uses a vagrant and we perform the functional testing with Tempest. If everything's fine, we make the release. Okay, so I just want to introduce you in case you know what is Tempest. So as you know, OpenStack is a really big project and it, uh, everybody knows what Nova is, what Neutron is, what Cinder is, what Glass is. 
but uh, maybe you are not aware about Tempest unless you are testing the cloud or you are doing some commits. So Tempest is the integration and testing framework for OpenStack, which was originally based on Python unit test to framework. And the idea for it is that it would be like doing black box testing, like from, so it would be used from a single dev stack, so from, from that to production clouds. So if anyone of you have ever done any kind of um, commit to OpenStack, even if you don't know, you have already used Tempest because this is uh, being used in Sul for every OpenStack commit. In fact, it's even being used several times because uh, it passes through many gates. Oh, sorry. So, uh, for instance, uh, the services that are covered by Tempest includes, but are not only, like uh, Ironic, Nova, Sahara, Trove, Keystone, Glance, and so on. And those were originally monolithic and everything was integrated within the Tempest repo. So as we, the Tempest guys, we are great guys and we know a lot of um, things about OpenStack. We, would, we can't really cover everything about every OpenStack project. So uh, lately we have been thinking about like splitting the workload and we are working on the Tempest plugin interface, which basically it's a Python package which would contain the Tempest test for every other project. One big example about this would be Neutron. For instance, if you are aware, Neutron, it has a ton of sub-projects, and I think it's one of the most complicated projects within OpenStack. So you have like a Neutron, Neutron Elbas, VPN as a service, Firewall as a service, and even within Neutron, this has been split within different things. So uh, the solution within Tempest to check that out, it's uh, to split that into in, in our their own Tempest plugin, then you can create a virtual environment for that and using test R, which is a test runner, everything would be discovered in a seamless way from your testing node. How can you, we do that? Well, there's a tool called Cookie Cutter, uh, which allows you to create such a plugin. So if, I don't know if you're seeing this correctly, but the, the idea is quite simple. So basically you would need to add an entry point, which is the way the Python discovers new stuff on it, and that would be like uh, the scale for a Tempest plugin. Uh, you would have a plugin PY, which would handle everything, and then you would have like um, a test folder with uh, the API test, and then the snare test. Those snare tests, for, if, uh, just in case you are not aware of that, uh, as this is a beginner talk, um, we can just tell that those are the tests that cover several projects. Let's say, for instance, uh, you want to spawn a VM, then you want your VM to have a port, then you want your port to do something with another port, you want to test QoS, or you want them to do something on, on that. So those tests uh, are a little bit more difficult as uh, they would be sharing a ton of projects within them. So unless it's a real specific service, they won't be migrated to a Tempest plugin. Uh, in order to help leverage this load, uh, we have been publishing like what we will look like at a Tempest stable interface, which is, uh, okay, now I got my plugin. How can I use Tempest within my uh, library without having to import the whole Tempest? So we have released uh, this library called Tempest.lib. Originally it was Tempest-lib, but it has been reintegrated lately, which allows you to get most of the functionality that you would get from the original framework just as a library to use you for. So, uh, Basically, you can call the test runner, it would use uh, subunit, and you would have access to all the unified REST client. So let me just summarize this a little bit more, because I think it's interesting for uh, every other project contributor. And please, if you are developing Tempest plugins for your project, start using this. As we have seen, seen like uh, guys who try to reinvent the wheel, or just import the whole project, or just want to add everything there. Uh, this was released as a way to is the pain of doing that, and I think it's a great and great effort. Uh, here again, as I said before, this comes out from the developer guide, and if you see like the Sul Jenkins, once that you get your you land your commit, you would be having it over all the workflow. You'll be having it passing uh, the tempest test even two times. So the first one would be like over the review. You would have to use Sul which, just yes, in case you don't know that too, it's a gating system for automated testing. And it will go through a, a ton of Jenkins runs, such as uh, PEP8 for validation content, 
then Tempest, Tempest Neutron. Uh, we have a ton of gates for this. I uh, didn't really count them up, but you could be saying that there are more than 20. Once that it passes on and you got your core approval plus one by the Jenkins, before it gets merged, it would have to go through another set of Jenkins. Cells. So you can uh, imagine how important is this framework for the development of uh, OpenStack itself. Okay, so now moving back to the uh, Mionet Scalability Lab. This is the underlay uh, emulated uh, deployment we use for performing the scalability tests. So here you can see a number of elements that are uh, new, uh, Docker containers. And what uh, Mionet Scalability is using, we use this uh, Mionet Sandbox, which is a wrapper around Docker. So you define, you are able to define flavors uh, which are these, uh, in which you define these components, and then you build the, the images, and then you run them, and you have, uh, in this case, a uh, complete deployment of what we are interested in. So in, we are interested in testing Mionet with Neutron at scale. So we don't want to use Nova. That's why we... Um, we have these uh, network namespaces there. So um, in here, we see the minimal deployment. And what we can achieve with the Milanet sandbox is scaling the compute nodes with Docker Compose and up to uh, uh, now we are uh, scaling 30 uh, computes per, per server. So what it makes interesting is that we can use Rally to run the benchmarks against this deployment while monitoring with Grafana, which is the dashboard, and InfluxDB, the time series data database, and two collectors, uh, Telegraph and JMX Trans, that allows you to collect the uh, time series data and put it into the InfluxDB. So right now, we are um, using the, the benefits of these uh, two uh, main tools. So what are the, those benefits? The benefit is that the Internet Sandbox allows you to easily deploy and reproduce these uh, deployments and scale an, an emulated underlay on, on demand. It's really fast, as you can just rebuild the, the whole environment in just seconds. Um, and it's easy to scale. It allows you to version the different um, uh, components. Uh, uh, starting with a base uh, version, you can just create a number of versions very easily. And uh, you can use it on a, on a CI in Jenkins so that it can be, uh, deployment can be automated and you can uh, run them like nightly for every patch, for every different version. In the case of Rally, then it's like it's the perfect framework for uh, testing scalability a benchmark. So the, you have already an upstream neutron uh, task, and it's open source. And then in top of all, it's customizable. So what we are doing is we are deploying, developing our own plugins so that we can um, test our specific the specific um, benchmarks against this uh, environment. So, so what are we achieving currently with our uh, plugins and the benchmarks? So we are able to compare the overhead introduced by Neutron. So as I said, Neutron calls are translated into API, uh, Mionet API calls. So we can compare. Uh, just using Mionet API calls uh, and using Neutron calls, what's the overhead introduced by these two um, layers of uh, attacking the API? Uh, we are developing our own scenario test tasks based on the upstream Neutron tasks, scenario task. So instead of uh, running VMs, as we said, we are not interested in Nova because of the complexity that adds to our deployment. We are using network uh, namespaces to uh, as emulation of, of VMs. So with that, we can uh, either do 
plane control plane um, tests, so finding the upper limits for the neutron objects, and we can, so we, we are test on the two dimensions, and then adding uh, workloads to the tests, so we can add uh, north-south uh, traffic and east-west. Right now we are uh, benchmarking the latency uh, north-south and, and east-west. Additionally, we also are running some rally uh, tasks on the uh, upstream uh, networking uh, plugin. And now I will show a simple use case. We, we found a bug we found running a simple use case uh, of our uh, network plugin. So in this, this is the uh, rally create port uh, task, which is a slight modification of the uh, upstream neutron create and delete task. So what it attempts is to uh, it creates a router and a network. So in each operation, iteration, it attempts to create uh, two ports and add a, um, an IP, and then it benchmarks the time for every each port creation. Uh, Rally allows you to define the rate per second of this uh, uh, port creation. In this case, we use a rate per second of one request per second. The number of iterations, the 3,500. Uh, and another important thing that Rally allows you is to define an SLA. In this case, we said that couldn't be uh, higher than five seconds per iteration and a uh, failure rate. So the mm, task will be aborted if there is any failure in the, when running this task. So now so I will show you the Rally task report for this. Does it work? Can you see? I don't think it's not. Can you read? Yeah? Bigger? Bigger? Even bigger? Is now okay? Okay, so that's the the task report. Oh, no, it's too big. The rally task report for the uh, port creation. Let's see. So what we see here is that there was this uh, SLA failure. That's something because of some reason it aborted the, the execution of this. So that's the report. See, the execution failed because of the SLA was aborted. You can see here that's the, the trend and of the benchmark of the time of creation. So we go on to give details. We can actually see that if we leave the, the benchmark for the creation time. So in the x-axis, we have the iteration number. On the y-axis, we have the time of uh, the second port creation operation. In this case, we see that the second port operation creation what didn't fail. So if everything would have like gone well, this would be the trend when creating uh, uh, ports at scale. Uh, in, in Midonet. And on the other side, we see that the, the, that the first port uh, create operation at iteration 1,000 something failed and make the SLA aborted. So another thing is uh, what are the failure report uh, returned by Rally? So that the first error is like the disconnection to Neutron fail, but then we see this could not acquire a log for a storage operation. So we were wondering what's this coming from? So we decided to go to our um, Grafana dashboard. So look, at just a second, maybe we should also introduce about what SLA is, just in case people well, don't know. The sale, well, I, have, I have said that is the, yeah. if either the maximum iteration per uh, maximum time per iteration uh, is above a certain threshold, okay. then the, okay. the task is aborted. And the same with the, the failure. So we went to the uh, Grafana dashboard for monit which monitors the zookeeper node count. So I haven't explained that um, in addition to the compute nodes, controller, and gateways, gateways we use uh, 
a number of um, network state da databases, which is uh, Zookeeper and Cassandra. Zookeeper stores the topology, so the objects that are created in the virtual network, and Cassandra stays the net network's flow uh, state. So when we run this uh, create port and we saw the failure, we went to the Grafana dashboard to see what was happening. So we, you can see this uh, increase uh, represents the creation of uh, port objects into, new, into Zookeeper. So at the rate of one per second, this was creating ports, objects in the virtual topology until the failure occurred. At this point, nothing was added to Zookeeper until the SLA was canceled, aborted by the rally and the cleanup of resources started. So what we, another trend we can see here from the, from the dashboard is that there is an offset in the remaining uh, Zookeeper node count after the cleanup, which means that this access to Zookeeper uh, was somehow blocked during some time and these operations could not perform the, this write and delete, uh, create and delete ports at the end. Uh, on the other side, the Zookeeper data has the same like, trend as the uh, node count, and the uh, garbage collection time gives us an idea of what was the memory consumption in the Zookeeper nodes. So what was the bug that was causing this uh, failure? So unlike MySQL, Zookeeper does not uh, support transactions. So every operation uh, needs to acquire the lock to perform this translated neutron operation into Midonet uh, API uh, calls. So what it happens is that these uh, acquiring lock operations time out, and so the SLA fails. So what was the, the solution then? So the solution consists on serializing this access to the Zookeeper lock inside the cluster so that the request don't time out acquiring the lock. I don't know if we are fine of time. So yeah, we are fine of time, so maybe. Um, conclusions and future work. We've uh, explained that scaling one dimension is not enough in distributed systems because of the unknown relationships between the different dimensions and that we need emulated test beds to um, test scalability in these uh, agile environments. This allows us to catch, as we've seen, scalability bugs, compare the trends between software versions, different patches, but of course, you can use an emulated uh, testbed to perfor per perform performance benchmarking as it is emulated. So we still need the real testbeds for that. As future work, we plan to scale these uh, Mionet sandbox to allow a thousand uh, computes with middleman, and this is, will be done by using Docker Swarm, uh, so we can scale up to then. And on the other side, uh, adding new Rally plugins so that we have better uh, benchmarks for for that. These are, here are some links to the... And so, thank, thank you, you so much for attending and so see you in Barcelona in October. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or want to say something, now is the time. Uh, I have a question that uh, uh, when you use Rally to do performance tests, what if the HTTP re, uh, response is a sync is a sync process. That means uh, you get a uh, HTTP uh, 200, but you think that, oh, this HTTP request is good, but the process may be uh, a sync to the agent, maybe a RPC, or maybe something to the agent, and the agent need to do something uh, that the agent may be a uh, work file, then uh, what you say is that the HTTP request is good, but maybe the, works, the real work may be failed. 
uh, what you uh, do or handle this scenario? So it's true that the uh, failure report from Rally doesn't tell you the 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 source of the problem. It just tells you the, the symptom. That's why uh, the dashboard, the graphic, uh, the graphics monitoring uh, are useful for. So of course you need to go like we had to go uh, on the neutron server logs that were then we had to go to the Mionet API logs that were giving uh, more more insights, uh, better uh, log re and log error and after that we could like use this information. So I guess it depends on the type of error you get. You need to you need to go to the logs in the end. So logs and monitoring, these are the, the two the two main like tools you have for debugging out. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. That was this interesting uh, setup. Uh, I was wondering if it's possible to reuse any of your your test framework for uh, for evaluating other SDN controllers oh, and perhaps ah. doing uh, con, you know comparison tests. Sure, the, the Midonet sandbox is is open source, so you can just go uh, there to the second link, Midonet sandbox, and then you have these flavors in YAML and it's a YAML file, and you can add or remove components, Docker's, and you can build the Docker file for any other uh, component. So as as you see. We we have spawn the for the for the topology. So here instead of middleman, you could like set you create your images, your components for whatever other. So for example, in fact, we also plan to perform some uh, comparisons against OVN. So we will spawn more, uh, an equivalent setup. But instead of with Mironet, we yeah, I'm actually OVN. interested in OVN and some of the open daylight. Um, then options. it's in, in, we are we haven't uh, done yet the the configuration of this flavor with OVN, but we're after after it. So and I mean right now you can deploy that just getting the the source code from the Mionet sandbox and running it and yeah, you feel free, free to, to play with it. It should be pretty agnostic to any solution. All that you have to do is just go uh, fetch the code and configure that so you would use your solution instead of middle and agent. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so, so actually I want to add one point. So speaking of OVN, there's an ongoing effort that follows a very similar type of methodology uh, using Docker container to emulate. So there's work from both eBay and IBM okay. working on that. And I think it's already committed into the OVS, uh, OVN testing uh, Git repository. But, but again, my question is, do you have some thoughts about, so the, your middleman agent running on the compute node is part of your control plane, right? Exactly. So do you have some thoughts on how you're gonna be faithfully emulating it's uh, you know the scalability of your whole control plane, including your idle man. You talk about 30 instances, 30 containers per host. Is there some consideration from a performance? Uh, it's m memory constraints. We've like it's we've been watching like how much we can put into a uh, uh, 128 gigs of RAM, uh, 24 cores server, and but yeah, it should be pretty easy to to if using multi-node uh, Docker Swarm to scale to different servers. That's the, the also a future future work. So, so your your middleman agent is uh, is running in JVM, is it? Or it's sorry, a, your the middleman agent is it a JVM based application? It's, it's, yeah, it's, I it's, see. It's, okay. Uh, so the other question is, you talk about the locking uh, of the zookeeper, zookeeper access. What what was the parallel parallelism that you were testing? Uh, the, the, the what? Sorry? The parallelism that you're testing that to that led to the the locking timeout. The the access to the lock of the of writing of creating a new object because the zookeeper stores the virtual topology. Uh -huh. So every new port, every new router needs to be created in zookeeper. Right. But as it doesn't support transactions as in MySQL, yes. For each of these operations, you need to acquire a lock, perform right. this creation, then. That give away the lock and so on. So when the load increases, so in port creation you create, you create, create, create ports, right. and then this queue of um, acquiring the lock increases. At some point, the, the timeout uh, is, is fired. 
so you get these these uh, error. Yeah, I assume this type of error happens when you have higher sort of parallel requests exactly. for ports, so right? So what was the parallelism that you were testing? Now it's one request per second, so that means that if it's, it, it takes more like, because it's one create port, but this means that there are uh, many operations, so, so it's not just create port, but it's assigning a, an IP and so on. So this uh, create port operation is not just one operation, but some other operation, it, you know? And that means and, and, that and those operations will need to happen while the lock is obtain, uh, is a uh, hold held by this one single uh, transaction. Exactly. Okay. So that's a problem. So now uh, the well, there are different approaches, but right now the the approach is to have a queue, but in the cluster, so the timeout doesn't occur in the when accessing the the zookeeper, but uh, well, it's not said, but the the API controls the access to this. To the zookeeper, to so, the zookeeper so now with this uh, um, uh, serialized lock acquisition mechanism you're, 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 you just we, talked about we are, how, we are able to how to many uh, pores per, per second or per minute can you sustain I haven't tried because that's I w that was for the 50 version with Liberty but we have been in 91 and I can't remember but it's I, I don't know <laughs> now okay. the number but it, it increased like hundreds of times so you didn't have probably we hit a, another type of error but the there was no any more problem with the, the zookeeper access but yeah that's good, a, good, a good question I don't know how have the answer right now okay thank you you're welcome okay so then thank you very much for attending oh yeah uh, oh, go ahead um, one of your bullets actually said that you were doing uh, data plane testing um, is the what are you using for traffic generation and monitoring and is it distributed to all your container nodes? So right now we are only uh, testing um, ping latency. So our uh, only uh, real traffic, but we plan to like, create with iperf, netperf, uh, real uh, traffic workloads. Okay. So anything else? Then thank you for attending and hope you have enjoyed. Thank you very much, Lana. <laughs>